everyone on this good morning everyone on this snowy gibson's morning our numbers are down and uh, we're pleased to welcome you all here and we're especially pleased to welcome joyce parry moore with us this morning there she is <laughs> And Joyce will speak to us after the service this morning a little bit. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. And we wait your arrival and Patrick with great anticipation. <laughs> and uh, the doors are wide open. <laughs> you won't even have to bang on them with a staff like the bishops have to when they take off us, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Good. So we'd like everyone this morning in, in Zoom land to leave your cameras on so that uh, Joyce can, can see everyone as much as possible. So you can mute, but uh, leave your cameras on so we can, we can all be together. So that's, uh, that's wonderful. So here we are this morning in the presence of God on this Sunday in Advent to celebrate the coming of our Lord, to await with introspection, with penance, with renewal. We are welcome to the throne of grace and we are welcome to rejoice in the presence of God the Holy Spirit with us. So let's just take a moment of silence to center ourselves and acknowledge the presence of God with us.
A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. We stand as we are able for our opening hymn, Common Praise 89, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Today we light the fourth Advent candle, which represents our call to love. This candle is a symbol of God's love, revealed in the baby Jesus. It is a symbol of God's love which is alive in each of us today. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in in dread will be deserted. 
Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thank you. Let us pray. Your love is present everywhere, and your purpose is revealed in love. We are called to be your people of love. Help us to love one another. Help us to show love to all the world. In this time and place, we gather on the unceded ancestral lands of the Squamish and Siasha nations. From many places and peoples, we come to this house of prayer. In this time and place, we await the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. Maranatha, come, Christ, come. In this time and place, we await God's transformation of the world. Maranatha, come, Christ, come. In this time and place, we await the coming of the Commonwealth of Peace. Maranatha, come. Christ come. In this time and place, we commit ourselves to work with Christ that all these things may be accomplished. In the name of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be glory and praise forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Our Canticle 26, Te Deum Ladamas, You Are God.
to listen for the word of God. The psalm is Psalm number 80, and please read the bolded verses responsibly. Thank you. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your side in honor, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. My soul waits for the Lord. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. In his word is my hope. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. In his word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning. His word is my hope. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. His word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My soul waits for the Lord. In his word is my hope. The second reading is from the book of Romans, letter to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, 
which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be his, the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are being called to belong to Jesus Christ. To the God's beloved in Rome, you are called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, now the birth of Jesus as Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commended him, commanded him. He took her as his wife, 
but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of Christ. Again, our guest preacher this morning, the Reverend Gary Hamlin. You may be seated. Gary, you are muted. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Can you hear me now? May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. So again, I'm pleased to be with you uh, this morning. I thank you for inviting me to, to be with you. Uh, Joy is here, as, uh, as you can see in, in the background, and we, we want to express our sadness at the death of Bob Johnston and to pass along our sympathies to, to Rosemary. We have fond remembrances of, of John and his support for our ministry while we were there 20 years ago. And I want to congratulate you on your appointment of your new priest, Joyce. I'm, I'm sure you're, you are all relieved uh, 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 after the, uh, that the long process is now complete and she will be with you in, in February. And in advance, we wish you a, a, a Merry Christmas and a, and a Happy New Year. Well, the following hymn it is from the first century in which Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth rejoices for both of them being chosen to bear children of God. We know this this canticle from Luke's gospel as the Magnificat. And I'm going to read it from the First Nations version of the New Testament. You may recall that I used uh, this in, in a homily earlier this year, and that it is prepared by First Nations people, Indigenous people in North America, for Indigenous people in North America, but it bears wonderful version of the, of the Bible for us. The Song of Bitter Tears who is Mary. When bitter tears heard this, she was filled with gladness and her words flowed out like a song. From deep in my heart, I dance with joy to honor the great spirit. Even though I am small and weak, he noticed me. Now I will be looked up to by all. The mighty one has lifted me up. His name is sacred. He is the great and holy one. Then her face seemed to shine as she continued. He shows kindness and pity to both children and elders who respect him. His strong arm has brought low the ones who think they are better than others. He counts coop with arrogant warrior chiefs, but puts a headdress of honor on the ones with humble hearts. And then she smiled. She looked up to the sky and shouted for joy. He prepares a great feast for the ones who are hungry, but sends the fat ones home with empty bellies. He has been kind to the tribes of wrestles with creator Israel, who walk in his ways. For he has remembered the ancient promises he made to our ancestors, to father of many nations, Abraham and his descendants. And when she finished, she and Elizabeth both laughed with joy, with hearts full of gladness, they told each other, their stories. Well, in choosing this passage we know as the Magnificat, I've been thinking about the courageous women and men of the world who battle the forces of oppression. Especially today, the courageous women and men in Iran, Ukraine, Syria, and in our own part of the world, those who battle against the oppression of racism and inequality. And as we prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, we celebrate his mother, Mary, who represents all who are involved in this battle. This morning, I, I want to explore why Mary has been so persistently important 
through the 22 centuries we've been around as people of God. And I'm interested not just in why we identify with Mary, but also in why she persists through the ages. To begin to get an answer to this question, I want to go down a kind of litany of her role as we find it in scripture. The first thing we find in scripture, particularly from Luke's gospel, is that Mary is the first disciple and she remains faithful. Luke makes this point by telling us that when the angel comes and asks Mary to become the mother of the Messiah, she says yes. And she remains faithful to that yes, even in the most difficult of times. Luke says this about Mary. She was the first believer in Jesus. She was the first follower, the first disciple. And she didn't fall away from him in troubled times. And if for no other reason, she earned a mark of respect in the early church community. Second in the gospel, Mary is revealed as someone who keeps God's word. You might remember that incident when Mary and her relatives were trying to see Jesus when he was in the full bloom of, the public, of his public ministry, and there was a big mob around him. They sent word through the mob to Jesus. Well, Jesus, your mother and your relatives are here. And Jesus responded, but who is my mother, my father, my brother and sister? The one who keeps the will of God. That's my mother and my brother and my sister. He was saying Mary's claim to greatness was not that she was his biological mother. Rather, it was because she kept the word of God. And that's a remarkable compliment to this persistent woman. Third, and this is where she gets closer to us, she becomes a representative of all the silenced witnesses and members of people who are exploited. Remember, Mary lived in territory occupied by the Roman army. She knew what today's peoples who live in countries occupied by another army know today. She knew segregation. She knew a minority place, what it was to be a woman in such a society. According to scripture, she had to keep her mouth shut while Harold, Herod killed the innocent children of Bethlehem. She had to stand on the fringe of the crowd while she saw her son publicly humiliated carrying the cross. She had to stand behind the soldiers' spears that formed a fence, unable to get to Jesus on the cross to comfort him. That's why people have always related to Mary through the sculpture in Rome's St. Peter's Basilica, Michelangelo's great Pieta, holding the broken body of her son. People can identify with her letting forth the only thing she could let forth, a cry and a scream and tears. People who are oppressed and cannot speak out because they will be imprisoned or shot or retribution will be made against their families, they understand Mary and she understands them. Any parent who is worried about pornography and parents who are worried about people pushing drugs on their children, parents looking at the media's values, some of which are horrendous, parents who say, we don't want to live like that, but are powerless and helpless to control these things. We know what Mary means and why she persists, because we can identify with the woman who is the silenced witness to things that are better, and society keeps her suppressed. And fourth, Mary is a faithful pilgrim. People can identify with that. Remember the story in Luke's gospel, the angel said, you are to be the mother of God. And what did she say? She asked the question, how can this be? How many people throughout the ages, including you and me, have cried that? How can I tackle this challenge? How can I survive? How can I begin all over again as a widow, a widower? We romanticize the fact that Mary was engaged to Joseph and she lost him somewhere along the way. But there's no romance in losing a spouse as those among us who are widows and widowers know. 
there's no romance in losing a child through natural or accidental death. There's no romance in losing a child in crucifixion or knowing death and separation or being a bereaved person. And we ask Mary's question, how can this be? How can I carry on? How can I survive life? How can I get along? I don't know what I'm going to do. I've just been told I have cancer. I've just been told I have a short time to live. I've just lost my job, my children. How can this be? We're asking Mary's question. How can this be? No wonder Mary persists. We identify with her questioning. Mary is the God bearer. And as followers of Jesus, that's our role. She gave forth to the world the living Christ. People through the ages have always identified with that role. Thanks to Mary, everyone here this morning is to be a Christ bearer, to birth the Lord and give him to other people. Mary did that, and we recognize that. In her, we have a kindred spirit. And finally, Mary persists because she has been given to us. Remember the scene on Cal Calvary. Jesus is dying, and there's his mother. He says, who will take care of my mother when I'm gone? And then he turns to John, who represents all the Christian family, and says, son, behold your mother. And with that, he gives away his last and most precious possession. We are the recipients of that. That's why Luke has Mary stand up in the temple and sing her Magnificat and her great prophecy. Behold, all generations shall call me blessed. Mary lies underneath all of this, all of us, simply because she is enormously human, because she is a great disciple, and because everything in her life has touched our lives. The great psychoanalyst Carl Jung said that Mary symbolizes Mother Earth, the very womb of our birth. There's not a tear or a smile of Mary's that we haven't felt. There's not a question, a hurt, a pain, and a suffering that we cannot identify with. So no wonder she persists. No wonder she persists. Amen.
Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us stand or sit for our prayers of the people. Marilyn, unfortunately, is not able to join us this morning. Must be the snow. So let us use the uh, litany from the Book of Alternative Services. Uh, litany number 12 for Advent. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, Come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free, and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill the desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creatures you fashion from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their savior. Come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. Let us also pray for God's holy Catholic Church throughout the world, offering prayers for our Bishop John, our Metropolitan Lind, our Primate Linda. 
We also pray for all the leaders of churches throughout the world that together in patience, in waiting, and in hope and faith, we may renew the good news of Christ in our lives and in our service to the world. Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray for Joyce Perry Maud, our incoming vicar, and for her husband Patrick. We pray that you grant them grace at the transitions into this new move to a new country, a new community. Bless them with all your grace and assist them in their coming here safely and soon. Lord Jesus, come soon. We hold before you, Lord, all those who are sick or are in need of your healing grace in body, mind, or spirit. I invite you to offer the names of the people you are holding in your hearts, either aloud or silently in your heart. Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray for all the first responders in our community uh, this season, especially with this snowfall and the um, upcoming stretch of cold weather. Pray for all those who are responding to the needs of those who are in need of shelter in need of food, in need of companionship. Lord Jesus, come soon. Grant eternal rest to all who have departed, especially in our midst, Robert Johnson and others who anniversary you may be remember as at this time. Rest eternal grants unto them, O Lord, and may your light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Continuing in prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by the Holy Spirit, and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, give us the faith of Joseph to see the Spirit's work where the world sees only shame, to listen to the promise and to awaken to the cry of life renewed and love reborn. Through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come, amen. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. 
Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit and gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We stand to sing our offertory hymn, Common Praise 95, O Come, Divine Messiah. before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your son our savior and lord amen christ the son of righteousness shine upon us and scatter the darkness from before our path may god the undivided trinity give us courage to see Christ in all who suffer, to be the hands to the helpless, food for the hungry, and rescue for the oppressed. Amen. Our closing hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
My sisters and brothers, go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. December flies away at the rose-red splendor. April's crowning glory breaks while the whole world wonders at the holy unseen power of the tree which bears the flower. On the blessed tree blooms a reddest flower. On the tree blooms a rose here in love's own garden, full and strong in glory.